Hey, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about cervical exams. You might also hear them maybe called badge exams. I'm going to talk about what we look for and are they necessary. One of the things we look for is dilation. So dilation is how open is your cervix. And I'm talking about a normal pregnancy term gestation. Your cervix is, is typically closed and one centimeter is right here and then 10 centimeters is the point to where you know you can push your baby out i mean some women are what they can be eight centimeters and have that urge to push and push a little bit and it opens right up the 10 centimeter mark is just an average it can the baby's head could maybe be a little smaller or bigger but this is basically the average size and what i want to talk about uh, about the dilation this is not how wide your vagina is going to open. Like that is a misconception. When a baby goes through the birth canal, newborns have, I mean, hole, holes in their skull. They're called fontanelles. So the skull is not completely fused. So when the baby goes through the birth canal, those bones are going to overlap. They can overlap a little bit. And that's what they're made for to help go through the vaginal canal. I mean, still, needless to say, the women's, bo women's bodies are amazing. So another thing we look for when we do a cervical exam is how thick is your cervix? So it's called effacement. So there's 0% to 100%. A normal cervix is about four centimeters thickness. Once that thins out completely, 100% effaced. Okay, so again, this is all by feel and it's very um, subjective to the person who is checking you. So like my check might differ from, you know, Dr. Jones's check. And another thing that we look for is stations. There's specific landmarks in the pelvis that we feel. It's called the ischial spine. That is zero station. And then anything above that is minus one, two, three. I've seen up to minus five in charting systems. And then past that, towards the vaginal opening um, is plus. So plus one, two, three, four, five. I've seen that too, but. So those three things are the main things that we look for when someone is doing a cervical exam to give report to the next person or it helps us determine is this person progressing in labor or not. I'm gonna go on to talking about are they necessary? So that's not a yes or no answer. It's, it's not black and white. When it is necessary, there are times that cervical exams are necessary. For example, let's say you come in, you're in a lot of pain, you think that these are labor pains, we need to check you to see, are you dilating? Are you not dilating? It gives us a lot of information about, is this labor pain or is this something else? Is this pain affecting your cervix to where you're dilating or thinning out? Also, if you are in an induction process, like I mentioned earlier, we need to check your cervix to determine what medication is appropriate for you. For example, let's say your cervix is closed and it, is really thick. We're not gonna blast you with Pitocin, which is an IV form of medication that helps you get induced. There are certain qualifications a woman's cervix needs to have before Pitocin is started. So let's say, you know, I, I check Sally and she is five centimeters. We're typically not gonna give you a certain medication to help induce your labor because your cervix is more open now, so you qualify for a different medication, which would typically be Pitocin. And another reason why we would need to check you is let's say a woman is GBS positive. That is bacteria that we all have, it depends if it's dormant or not. For those of you who've gone through the labor process, may have remembered getting a swab done from your vagina to your rectum area. So if a person is GBS positive, we need to check their cervix and see if they're making progress to help determine when we start those antibiotics or not. Because when a woman is GBS positive, I'm talking about the US, we have to start antibiotics and the goal is to get two doses before the baby is born because group beta strep is, we are 
okay having that, but sometimes it can make a baby really sick. So that's another reason why we would wanna check your cervix. Like, are you progressing? And some hospitals like mine at night don't have in-house doctors. So we wanna make sure that the doctor is there for delivery in a timely manner. So that would be another reason why we wanna check your cervix to see, are you progressing fast or slow? Your nurse, your provider should always educate you on why your cervix is being checked. I would like to think no one just does it for fun. So always be educated, definitely advocate for yourself and ask questions if you don't understand why you're being checked. Typically when someone is, let's say their water broke and they're not in labor yet, those are reasons why we, you know, we wouldn't check a mom so frequently until she was more in active labor. I can go into more detail about it, but I just wanna go over the meat and potatoes and some information about the cervical exams, what we look for, and are they necessary or are they not? If you have any experience about you know, being checked and you didn't feel like it was necessary, comment below and maybe we can have a discussion about it and I'll make another video about it. And if you like this information, please subscribe and thank you so much for watching.